Why even ask? You don't care. I used to get confused when my 12 year preteen emo daughter would leave these quotes on her wall. But then I quickly realized this was just some cry for attention. A girl that doesn't realize how privileged she really is. I mean, some days I wake up and she wouldn't even bother to change the board. She leaves the same message up to make sure her father sees it. And I saw it. But when you're so privileged that you can't even bother to spell the word depression right, I'm going to assume that you really don't have it. And I simply got better things to do with my time. I got a gal in Cedartown, Georgia. I used to have to walk nearly three miles to quarter. She never had much just a sharecropper's daughter, but I married her and took her down to New Orleans. Got a little house in South French Quarter. Got a job, took in bail, loads them on a steamboat. I give the seven days pay next day unbroke. When she ain't a-sleepin', all day she's a-primpin'. Every evening when the sun goes down, she starts to swarm in on New Orleans town. Walking into work this morning at daybreak, I caught her with the tall, long dandy from a cane break as she walked right by me and she looked right through me. I made up my mind. What I'm going to do is in the pawn shop and bought a twenty-two. I watched as the room clerk gave them a room key. A standing right outside, I could read room two, three. Tonight, I'll put her on a train in Georgia. Gonna be a lot of kinfolk squalling and grieving, cause that Cedartown gal ain't breathing. 
interesting that Waylon Jennings would make a song called Cedar Town, Georgia in 1971. Yet the song takes place in New Orleans instead of Cedar Town, Georgia. And that's because this is a tiny town in Northwest Georgia. Not much information is given on the town. Heck, even the history of the town is in dispute on whether or not the Cherokee and Creek Native Americans lost a foot race to the settlers or whether or not they won a baseball game. Either way, Cedar Town was established. Not much big news, except for in 1970s, many of the structures were demolished, train stations, churches, and high school, all on Main Street. You look on Wikipedia, and this town goes from 1970 to 2016, specifically December the 30th of 2016, where the Wikipedia says a 12-year-old named Caitlin Nicole Davis, known online by the username It's Dolly, hanged herself from a tree in her backyard while live-streaming the event on LiveMe after she claimed being neglected by her biological father alongside being physically and sexually abused by her stepfather. The video caused widespread outrage. I'm in my car and I'm driving to Silver Creek and Cedar Town. And all I'm thinking about is Caitlin and how I'm going to cover Caitlin's story. But as I do my research, things are a little bit more spookier than I thought. Charles, also known as Chuck Parrish, in 1988 was injured in an on-site accident on his job. Now, this accident caused him to be amputated from his knee. The settlement he received from his job allowed him on March 2nd of 1989 to purchase the trailer and property on 1310 Dunn Road in Silver Creek, Georgia. Chuck lived there with his wife, Debbie, and he also lived there with his three daughters, Valerie, Daphne, and Tammy. Tammy is Caitlin's mother. There are reports of a lot of fighting between Debbie and Chuck. Now this is something that's gonna go on through many generations at this trailer. But it's fascinating to me of how spooky things really get. On September the 4th of 2004, Chuck Parrish died suicide inside that trailer. What's weird is not only was this a suicide at this location, but how he died. He died from a shotgun blast. The report showed the shotgun blast hit his axilla, which is your under armpit. I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen someone commit suicide by shooting themselves under the arm with the shotgun. It gets crazier. So when Chuck passed away, they're trying to decide who's going to inherit the property and as they do so, the trailer is rented out to someone. The trailer is rented out to Raymond David Johnson, who will be known as the Cedar Town Rapist. I can't make this up, this was less than two years later. So, so far on this property on 1310, we have a suicide and we have a serial rapist all within two years. Caitlin was born seven months prior to her grandfather's suicide to Matthew Reed and her mom, Tammy Parrish, who eventually got married and moved off to the military. As they went base to base, there was a lot of arguing going on, a lot of domestic problems, until Matthew Reed asked Tammy to leave. Tammy left back with Caitlin and traveled around and eventually moved back to Georgia, where she inherited the trailer on 1310 Dunn Road. This is when Tammy meets Anthony Lee Rogers and remarries and he becomes Caitlin's stepdad. Now there was issues almost immediately as Anthony was a lot more strict than Tammy was in trying to discipline Caitlin. Now that's what you hear from Tammy. You hear from Caitlin. Which I had a stepfather, but he tried to rape me. And he told me I should go hang myself because I was worthless. I was a worthless whore. Sorry. <laughs> like, he, he said I should go hang myself. I wasn't worth it. It's 13 o'clock in Canada. You joking. Do not 
do things like that. You are too. Yeah. Uh, well. I mean, for the longest while, I actually cut right Norris. But you can still see the scars barely. It's been a couple weeks. See? My scars. Why are you dead? Say, he's my stepdad. What time is it there? It is 8 10 p.m. My stepfather said, No, my, I have no idea. You need to go ask him. He couldn't stand my guts, but at the same time, he tried to get in my pants. Like, he was trying to, like, have sex with me. And I was like, no, you're 40. <laughs> a rebellious preteen or an abused preteen. I'll let you guys decide that for yourselves. But I would like to add, due to the mishandling of Caitlin's situation, we'll never find out. I was given a $10 donation for my trip to come see you. So this is from someone that cares. Well, plus one cent more. This story captivated me from being a suicide as I normally cover crime because there was just so many places that this could have been prevented. And I want to look at everything as a whole, but I want to break it down into different sections as well, too. So let's discuss the session of a biological father, Matthew Reed. If you listen to Matthew Reed, he almost tried all of his options to be in his daughter's life, but he feared Anthony Lee Rogers, he feared going to jail, and he feared lies from Tammy. And he said that Tammy poisoned his daughter's head. You listen to Caitlin, her father never tried to be in her life. No, I don't have a dad. I have a dad, but you know, he's not my dad. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> he's not my dad. Like, he's, he's my father. Like, he gave birth to me. Like, he helped create me. But he's not a dad. If you understand what I mean. Like, he lives two miles away from me. But he doesn't care about me. That tough you don't have a dad. Yeah. Look, when I OD'd and I was in the hospital, he didn't show up. He didn't show up. He didn't care enough to show up. Like, he didn't see me. He didn't come to visit. Yeah. He didn't come to visit. Hey, this is going to come to a boiling point to where one day, Tammy's going to tell Caitlin that her father saw her and he didn't try to speak or say anything to her. This is what her father had to say. It is really hard when you're the only one that is supposed to jump through all the hoops. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, it, it goes back to, you know, um, Tammy's goal was always to pretty much do the worst things possible to me, right? So any situation that they could put me in, that they could benefit from, is what they were going to do. I can't go to a place where Tammy and Anthony are, or they are going to put me in a situation that is it's a no-win situation for me, right? I mean, I'm not saying it. It's the right thing or the wrong thing. But I can be no more or less of a dad if I'm in jail than if I'm, than if I made the choice of not going to jail. You can always say someone could have tried more. You can always say they could have went to the depths when it's your child. And you can always see how you can get defeated over and over and over again by being put down or by being threatened by somebody allegedly and it can do it can destroy your will to want to fight i can't say what's right or wrong or what matthew reed should have done i can only say what i would have done in that situation i would have done everything in my power to try to see my child 
because the most important thing to note from this is that by the time the alleged incident happened, Caitlin had already tried to commit suicide. That she threatened to kill him one time. And this got her sent to Peachford Psychiatric Hospital. I think this was a gift and a curse sending her to this location because you want to try to get someone help that's going through anything mentally. But at the same time, it kind of destroys her credibility. If she leaves this place and she says, my stepfather has been molesting me, it could be written off as one of her manic episodes. Allegedly, this is what happened a lot of times. Caitlin, whenever she get really upset, was more looked at as her medicine isn't working, so let's try to get her her medicine. I worry about what the fuck I did. Wait, wait. Calm down, calm down. Calm down. Lady, shut up. Calm down. Well, I mean, you're acting calm like down. a whore. You calm, keep on bringing men down. over here calm and kissing up on down. all of them. Calm down. Does he know that? Calm down. Does he know that you keep bringing men in here? Calm down. And keep on kissing up on them? Because they think you get freaking pills? Who needs to live like that? Not when you got children. Oh, my God. Shut up, Katie. You don't know what the hell you're talking yes, about. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You always have to talk over you. Yes, I do. Yes, they have. No, they're not. Not no more. No, they were. And that ain't even what you're, you don't even know. Yes, I do. No, you don't, Caitlin. Shut up. Back in that fucking room and shut your mouth. Why should I listen to you? You heard what I said. I said, why should I listen to you? All right, well, I'm going to tell you what. You're going to listen to me. Why? Because I said. I ain't belittled you, Katie. All I said is well, damn, I ain't you to do a cool thing. Shut your goddamn mouth before I take a goddamn hammer to this phone. I don't care. I'll take a hammer to your phone, too. No, you won't. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, okay. I hit with you. Oh, I hit with her phone. I saw I hit with her phone. All I do is I want to hit with her phone. All you do is he make it live. I'm doing something! Katie, I ain't never lied to you, so stop. Yes, you have. No, I have not. You need to stop right now while you're here. I stop! Katie, shut your goddamn mouth! I don't care about you anymore! No! That's a fucking lie! She took your fucking Prozac there, or do you need to go back to the hospital? Follow me back to the hospital just so that I can deal with this crap! Take your goddamn pill, Katie! How about you stop? stop. You don't live in pain, Katie. So yes, stop. I do. Oh, okay. Thank you, How about you look at the fucking scars all over me? How about you look at those? You don't, you don't know what pain is? Katie, I done said stop. And I told you. You need to fucking talk to somebody. All you gotta do is come to me. Don't take it out on me. Stop where you're well, at. It's bad enough that my boyfriend that I just had just killed someone. That's not my problem. Don't take it out on me. Sit down. Sit down, Katie. I swear to you, it is all true. Stay off the goddamn internet. With the fucking psychos. Here, take a goddamn pill. I didn't know he was a psychopath. Well, there's more fish out of the sea. Don't take your shit out on me. Well, I mean, you always say things. Katie. You said that you were going to get a rid of Anthony right whenever you found out what happened, but you didn't. You stayed with him longer, and then what happened to the kids? Katie, please. I don't know why you didn't get rid of him at that instant. Whenever I told you what happened in the pool, why didn't you just go ahead and leave him? That's what I don't get. He violated me. He tried to get I know him. that, Katie, and is he here? Is he here? No, he's not. But he, you could have got it on sooner. That made me think that you didn't care. Knock, knock. Who's there? Caitlin. Caitlin, who? To be honest, I feel like going outside. Yeah, I do need horse. <laughs> Badly. I feel like going outside, finding a rope. Tying it to a tree, tying the rope around my neck, standing on a bucket, and just fucking jumping. 
When I first heard about this story, Tammy was Satan. She was the worst mother imaginable outside of Sarah and Amina, of course. I replaced certain things in my head for, for anyone who's not familiar with the case. There was a lot of, there's a lot of things that looks easily in your face as neglect. I'll give you an example. Most people who have looked into this case will tell you that Caitlin slept in a room with a hole in the floor. Now this is Northwest Georgia. I know you Northerners like to pick on us that it doesn't get cold down here, but it gets cold enough. It could snow. It gets cold enough that a 12 year old child should not be sleeping on a mattress and a floor with a hole in it. There's also a leaky pipe in this room that's leaving the entire floor wet. Upon further investigating this story, Caitlin was not supposed to go in there. Caitlin would go inside of that room where she can get along and she can be on her phone. Caitlin was supposed to share a room with her younger brother who had bump bags in the room. But this was a place for Caitlin to escape. So while it looks as if she was put off to a room, because one of the first things I said is that if, if my child had water on their floor, that their socks are constantly wet, it's cold, sick, could get molding from the pipes, I would have taken that room. I would have given my child my room and I would have taken that room. Again, this is a situation you have to ask yourself, what do you believe? You believe Tammy, that this wasn't her room and she was not supposed to be in there? You believe what Caitlin says when she says that this is her room? On some of the recordings that Caitlin did, you can hear her mom telling her to get out and she's not supposed to be in there. When we get to the fall of 2016, Caitlin now arrives at Cedartown Middle School. Upon getting there, she's bullied. She's bullied for being different. She's bullied for being the emo girl. Again, we want to look at this whole pie chart and look at every single thing that contributed to her wanting to commit suicide. We have a father to where, if he's neglectful or not a biological father, Caitlin feels he is. One thing he wanted to wanted to note was that even far after she passed away, he paid his child support. He actually goes around with the receipt that he paid his child support in his wallet to this day. Caitlin feels that her father is neglectful. Caitlin is arguing with her mom and she feels that her mother is a drug addict that goes out and leaves her along with her younger brother and sister to watch all the time. And now Caitlin is being bullied in school. Now, allegedly, leading up to this incident, Caitlin was suspended for drawing a picture of wanting to stab a, a, a boy in school. During this suspension and after being bullied, Allegedly, this is what led to her trying to commit suicide in, in November. I signal this as the beginning of the end. As when Caitlin came from the hospital, she started to go online. We have an emotional 12 year old girl with some instability issues who feels neglected from the world and now she's going to enter the dangerous online world as she joins YouTube and an app called Live Me where she streams live. She will begin streaming her first one on December the 6th and she will stream all the way until she ends her life. So prior to making this video, I got catfished by a couple of people trying to give me information on the case. I got catfished. Prior to making this video, I saw massive online bullying of middle-aged adults. So can you imagine how dangerous this could be for an emotional 12-year-old who feels neglected to come and join this world? Well, children her age, 
people all across the world, just terrible human beings can pray on her being so passionate and pray on her weaknesses. Pray on her gullibility. Pray on her need for acceptance because she does meet some dangerous individuals. Caitlin meets the adult, dangerous, sexual predator, Luke Callahan. No, allegedly. She meets a sexual predator that preys on little girls. We have multiple girls during that time. And as clear as video evidence showed, tried to get Caitlin to do some, well, <laughs> he was watching porn because he had a boner and he he had to get it out and oh, it was terrible like right when he started he said I'm gonna pop that pussy like this I'm like <laughs> I was like oh my god which when he was playing it he didn't mute it at first like so I heard the porn and the mo I was like it's just like whoa Let's just say I was I got very educated yesterday. <laughs> I got very educated yesterday. <laughs> That's terrible. Um let's just say does your boyfriend ever get in with you? No. Not really, because he lives all the way in Massachusetts and I live in Georgia. So But he's planning on flying down here one day. One day. He said pretty soon. Go find down here. So it was that's that's why he was watching porn to jerk it off because I wasn't there to fucking get it away. I wasn't there to help him out with that. He said you're supposed to be here to help me with these kind of things. I'm like, well, baby, I'm in Georgia. You're in Massachusetts. <laughs> How the hell am I supposed to do that? This is the thing that that really frustrates me about this whole case, this whole situation. We have a home that people are seeing during her lives where you can see that this is a terrible environment, just physically, just, it doesn't matter if it wasn't her specific room, just molded a wet carpet and holes in the floor. One, now we got her telling people online, she has an adult boyfriend. She's 12 years old. And once she says something like this, she's failed by the system again. Allegedly, Luke Callahan played and preyed upon her weaknesses. Break up with her and he'd run off and make her try to prove her love for him. Allegedly, he messed with her friend too as well. And this caused friction between her and her best friend in, in real life. Now, I don't want to go into too many details on this because I don't want to cause any pain in someone else's life when we don't know for a fact. I ought to tell y'all who Ben is, but I don't really feel like telling you because if I do, I get really emotional. Thanks. Ben? Ben was... I don't even know where to begin with Ben. Let's just say me and him were together for a very, very, very long time. Uh, I won't cut the pot. He was the long. He was the longest relationship I've ever had with anybody. We were together for seven months. Like I got really emotional. We didn't really break up. Um, it's the fact that, um, he catfished me, so that killed me badly. That was the longest relationship I've ever had, and he catfished me. He is actually a she named Alexa. But Caitlin was getting catfished at the time by someone that goes by the name of Ben. On my video, it doesn't matter who Ben is, because to Caitlin, it didn't matter who Ben was. The circumstantial evidence to show that Caitlyn knew she was being catfished, but she was so lonely. 
She wanted acceptance so much she didn't care. And that profile cut off and she went crazy. Just wanted somebody to be Ben, just somebody to love me, somebody to show me some kind of attention. To have that pain, that need. I mean, I want you to think about being catfish here. Once you find out that the person is not who they say they are, you cut ties. You don't reel in closer. This is someone who's screaming out for help. And then once again, she was failed. In my opinion, Caitlin saw a lot of sadness in her life. And it kept her even keel. But once she got online, she had hope. And hope could be a dangerous thing to someone who's using that against you. Someone such as Luke would use hope. You have hope of a guy liking you. Now I'm going to strip it away. Hope and now I'm going to strip it away. And this is going on at one of the most times of the year that people commit suicide. This is during the Christmas holidays from December the 6th to the day she lost her life on December the 30th. It's telling her, and right now, I got to see some early gifts, and I got me some nail polish, which I don't even use nail polish, as you can see, this is like over a month ago, I got this shit, I got this shit, I got me some headphones, which won't last a week, and I got more makeup, which I'm pretty sure you can tell I don't need anymore, but fuck it, and I got a broken wall. Thank you, siblings. That was their gift to me. And I got a baby in my wall. That's also very nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so my Christmas is great. And I got a BB gun. So don't fuck with Dolly. I saw an interview it was the second interview with Caitlyn's biological father today and it was given by someone by the name of Celeste who knows and he was screaming you know who is the evil person who is the enemy which was interesting to hear from her biological father who's the enemy um, what do we want from the enemy what are we looking for We're looking for understanding. We're looking for accountability. We're looking for purpose. Purpose that Caitlin did not die in vain. Luke Callahan is in jail now because he went on to molest someone else that young had someone reported him back when he was her boyfriend this could have been prevented the dissension the anguish from December the 6th to December the 30th to watch this little girl go through what haunts me She put a final video up on December the 30th that morning. She was irate. Hair was wild. She was different. She was angry. But she didn't want to commit suicide. She flipped off the tree. But what I can't get around is what happened. What happened from that video to her final video? I've searched around, I've talked to people, and the only thing that I can come up with is allegedly, as she called Luke her boyfriend again that morning, he broke it off. She talked to him last. Whatever happened, I've never seen determination like I saw on Caitlyn's suicide video on December the 30th 2016 Caitlyn walked outside she was just 
Very, very pretty. The blouse she had on didn't belong to her. It belonged to a friend. She had never worn it before. She reached inside of a car and she grabbed the dog walk. Everyone talks about her determination as she walked with that dog walk all the way to the tree in her backyard. And she began setting up this dog lead to hang herself. Everyone talks about the determination that Caitlin had as she sat her camera on the ground and while she's doing this, she's filming it live. She put a camera on the ground. She put the rope in the tree. She made sure it was a proper measurement. She made sure it was short enough. She made sure it can go around her neck. And once she had everything in place to kill herself, she came and she picked up the phone and she pretty much gave her last statement. I didn't know Anyone was home at the time when this happened. When I first heard of this story, I just assumed for a girl to be this determined, she had to have been home alone. To my surprise, she wasn't. Her mother was there. Her brother was there. Her sister was there. By this time, Anthony Rogers had been removed from the house, but we'll get more onto him in just a short moment. When I realized that Caitlin was there with her whole family, I go back and I look at this video and I see not only confidence in that she feels she's making the right decision to end her life, but the confidence that she has in knowing that she can do this in her yard in the daytime, dawn, and nobody's going to come check on her. In this video, she never once looked to the side. She never once flinched. She never once cried and gave her last creep and stopped and looked around the corner. She was more confident that no one was going to find her. Want to see neglect? Tammy claims that day she made Caitlin two hamburgers. And she saw Caitlin eat these two hamburgers. I want you to hold that thought in your head. So Caitlin says her last words. And she ends her life. She ends her life. And as she ends her life, people are saying some of the most horrific things to her. People were egging her on to kill herself. One person in particular by the name of A.B. Tara. This kid lived across seas. I don't remember which country he lived in. But I do know once he realized that she wasn't joking and she's really going to kill herself. He watched her commit suicide on the stream, but he ran into the other room and grabbed someone in the house with him. And he began to film his reaction to watching her kill herself. We'll come back to him in a short, in a short moment. This stream lasted 43 minutes. You want to talk determination. A lot of times when people commit suicide by hanging themselves, at some point they may change their mind, they may pull on the neck, and a lot of times you find people who've committed suicide by hanging with their hands around their neck or trying to put air into it. They're trying to escape. They change their mind at the last moment. Caitlin did the exact opposite. She was so determined to end her life, to prevent her, herself from trying to grab the rope around her neck. She grabbed her white shirt and she clenched it. She clenched it to give her hand something to do to not interfere with the process of ending her life until the body hung lifeless. Or so I thought. 
Upon my research, I learned Caitlin was found by her mom. First person to go out there, and her mom freaked out and she went crazy. But right before she found Caitlin, she called the cops thinking that this is another incident where she thinks Caitlin may have ran away. Keep in mind, Caitlin suicide video lasts 43 minutes. So she killed herself. She must have hung there about 20 more minutes. Her mom screams and runs and she tries to pull her down and she finally gets her down. The neighbor comes. Caitlin brother sees all of this and he goes in the house and he gets her little sister and she comes out and they see Caitlin. And you look online, everybody says Caitlin was dead, hanging there lifeless. She wasn't, she was alive. She was 12 years old. Maybe she didn't do something properly with the rope. You can't blame Tammy for not calling the cops back. You're freaking out. You see your daughter in this situation. And she's not remembering if you report your child ran away, the cops aren't coming 90 miles an hour blazing with the sirens and lights and everything on. They're just coming normal speed to take a report. But in her brain, I already called the cops. Why aren't they getting here? Why aren't they getting here? So it took a little while for her to call back and to finally get everybody out there. Caitlin was taken to the hospital. They put tubes all down her mouth, IVs, everything. They, they worked so hard to try to save her life. They worked so hard to try to save her life. But she died at the hospital and was pronounced dead. As soon as Caitlin was pronounced dead, allegedly an officer asked her mom, could you think of one reason why your daughter would want to end her life? And allegedly Tammy said, she said that my um, separated husband molested her. Contrary to what you heard, even though she said this, during Caitlin's autopsy, no rape kit was performed on her. No sex kit was performed on her in all period. If you do not do this and you bury this girl, you bury along with her, any hope of finding any truth of what happened with Anthony Lee Rogers. So for all of you wondering why nothing happened to him, what kind of a world do we live in? A.B. Tart made pages troll pages trolling her death and sadly this isn't an isolated event there is one suicide for every 25 attempted suicides males make up 79 percent of all suicides while women are more prone to having suicidal thoughts. One in every 65,000 children ages 10 to 14 dies by suicide each year. And these are some of the casualties of untapped love. Thirteen ten Dunn Road. Two suicides on one property. A year later, Caitlin's aunt overdoses. Was Tammy on drugs? Allegedly, or you listen to Caitlin. However, a year later. She was arrested for drugs, and that's when they finally took her two children away. 
the public failed. Parents failed. School system failed. Hospital failed. She was failed all around. And if just one person would have stepped up, if one person would have had a voice, all of this could have been different. There was a man at the graveyard that day. I didn't know who you were. But now that I do, I'm sorry for your loss as well. Autopsy report shows that Caitlin had nothing in her stomach. She said she saw Caitlin eating two burgers, but nothing was in her stomach. And I stand here and I realize her date of birth is February 20th. Same as mine. First day of Pisces. In Caitlin's previous suicide attempt, she did leave a letter. However, the cops let Tammy back onto the property herself that night unsupervised. Unsupervised. And after her death, her stepfather logged into her Facebook account. Wonder why. I'm sorry I came into your lives just to get out of it this quickly. I'm sorry for everything. I'm really and truly sorry for everything. But I can't do this. I'm sorry. Sorry, Luke. I wasn't the best for you. I'm so sorry. I just wasn't good enough. I'm sorry, Ben. I'm sorry, Ben. I'm sorry, Lizzie, that I hurt. I'm 
sorry, Lashina, that I always, <laughs> that I wasn't strong enough. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry I let this depression get to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. I'm really sorry. I just don't deserve this. I don't deserve to live. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. I know I'm making an act as well. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to all you guys who really like me and want me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I seem like a whore. That I'm nothing but worthless. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Why am I crying? I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to see my suicide. What if this wasn't in vain? I said we were looking for purpose and what if Caitlin gave purpose? The inspiration she's shown to so many others to make them go out and fight, to make them care, to make them spread your story for awareness to prevent others from going through the exact same thing. To teach us we need to be more concerned we need to show more love in the world. We need to pay it forward. You not only inspired so many others, but you inspired me to get on the right track as a father. Teaching me, Caitlin, the most important thing in life a parent can do is very simple. Listen.